Hello, this is question 18 on P6, OCR Gateway Physics or OCR Gateway Further Additional Science. This question is, well, on the face of it, it seems like it's a question on carbon-14 and radioactive dating, but actually, it's nothing to do with that at all. This whole question has nothing to do with the radioactive dating in, in the sense of using the half-life of carbon-14 anyway. It's really all about just interpreting data. So bear with. It occurs naturally in small amounts as carbon-14. It's a radioactive isotope of car carbon. Scientists have plotted the concentration of carbon-14 in the air since 1940. So you can see there's no data down here in 1920 to 1940. Something happens here. And suddenly carbon-14 in the air goes up much higher. Then something else must happen here. Carbon-14 begins to gradually decrease. Now, this is, on this y-axis, carbon-14 in the air in arbitrary units. That means there's, there's no kind of um, specific unit. It just means it helps you compare, so it's arbitrary. Okay, so what did happen there? Well, the question goes on to tell you a little bit about that. Testing of nuclear bombs started in 1955 and testing was banned in 1963. Scientists have used this graph to conclude that the nuclear, um, testing nuclear bombs increased the background radiation level. How does the graph support this conclusion? So it's about the background radiation. Now carbon-14 in the air is going to give off radiation. Therefore this graph tells us something about the background radiation. Testing started in 1955 and was banned in 1963. Think back to me talking through the graph. Something happened here. I think what year that might have been. And something happened here. What year might that have been? Okay, pause the video, have a little go, and then start the video again, and I'll tell you what it should look like. Well, this is a free mark question, and there's actually four kind of points that you can make. The first point is to talk about what's going on between 1940 and here, it's about 1955. Well, what's happening there? Well, there's no real change in carbon-14, so this is the first point you could make. It would be between the years 1940 and 1955, there's no real change in the concentration of, 19, of um, carbon-14. Then, the next point you can make is well, what's happening here between 1955 and this. Let's go down to the axis. About 1960-odd. That's 1970, so 1965. Well... You've already been told a little bit about that, so probably roughly 1963. You could say there is a rapid increase between 1955 and 1965. So that's the second possible point you could have made. The third point, well, 1965 until the present, well, roughly the present at least, okay, something else has happened, and gradually carbon-14 has um, decreased. I think it is important to make that point here over number two is a rapid increase. And this is a slower decrease. So if you're given data like that, a graph like that, talk about how quickly something is happening. That's the third point. Then I think really they also mention its background radiation level. So the fourth point you can make is that background radiation is caused by, to, to some extent at least, the carbon-14. Okay, hopefully you get this idea that they started testing nuclear bombs here, carbon-14 shot up, they realised, huh, we don't want so much radioactive particles in our atmosphere, they banned testing above ground 
nuclear bombs and gradually since then carbon-14 has been decreasing. So as I said nothing so far about actual radioactive dating with carbon-14. So a little bit more information then for you to read through. Teeth trap small amounts of carbon-14 when they're formed. So when they're formed I think is the important part of that. Scientists use the amount of carbon-14 trapped to estimate when it was formed. This table shows the age of a person when different types of teeth are formed. So your first incisor is made when you're three, your first premolar when you're seven, your first molar when you're three, your third molar when you're 14. Ian's first premolar tooth contains the equivalent of 1.22 arbitrary units of carbon-14. So 1.22 arbitrary units, that should remind you of the graph on the previous page. Scientists use this information and the graph to estimate that Ian was born in 1953. The scientists were not confident in the accuracy of this estimate. Suggest why they were not confident and how could they improve their level of confidence. So firstly, why are they not confident and how could they improve their level of confidence? Okay, um, I think remember those two points why they're not confident and how could they improve their com their confidence I think we'll go back up to the graph to answer that so pause the video <coughs> excuse me have a little go why are they not confident uh, about the year he was born his teeth contain 1.22 carbon 14 pause the video and have a go Okay, so first marking point then, well if you take 1.22 here, well you can see there's two points you can make here. Well actually at this point there's this kind of fluctuation, it's going to go up and down. If I zo imagine zooming in on that bit there, it would go whoop, yep. So that doesn't make us very confident there. But also if you carry on that line from 1.22 you can see it could be this year here. Could be 1985 odd. Um, so that's difficult isn't it? So there's two points you could possibly make there for your first mark. Either that the reading has fluctuated around that time or there are actually two possible years that two possible ages that he could be. So that one should have been black. Okay, well the other one is the idea of repeating the process. So if they wanted to be more confident, perhaps they would need to look at his other teeth and how much carbon-14 they would have. They could see maybe that it's less than the molar they were looking at, or it's more than. And depending on whether that the other teeth they were looking at was before or after, then they, they could see whether it's increased or decreased. So whether it was more likely to be this year, 1960, or this year, 1985. Part C then, and still no actual mention of ordinary carbon-14 dating. Scientists have used this method on teeth from people of different ages. They plotted their results on the graph. Look at the graph. So this is the estimated year of birth using the method. And this is their actual year of birth. Now the dotted line represents if they've been perfectly accurate, if you like, if all of their estimates had lined up exactly with their actual years of birth. And the red parts, look, they are the data. They are where they've actually made an estimate and found out the actual year of birth. So this is a way for scientists to test how accurate their results are. So what does the graph show about the scientists' estimates? It's a two mark question. So make sure you make two points about the accuracy of the red dots. They should be lining up on the dotted line. Make two clear points about how close they are to that trend line, that expected line. Well, 
Although it's a two mark question, there are three possible points you can make. You can say that in the middle, they're quite accurate. So near to the middle of the graph, um, between the years, you could say between the years 1960 and 1970, they're relatively accurate. Okay, now you could also say, lower down than that, second point you can possibly make, you could say between the years of 1960 and 1955, they're not very accurate, you could even do better than that because you can say their estimates are too low. Lastly, these top two, third point you can make, well here they're not very accurate again, their estimates are too high. Okay, I hope that part makes sense. Last question then. Or actually, pardon me, D and then E. Question D. Carbon-14 is radioactive, so it will decay. Its half-life is uh, 5,700 years. And that's the fact that they normally use with radioactive dating. But actually, this question isn't really about that. So what does that mean? Half-life is 5,700 years. It means it takes... 5,700 years to, for the carbon-14 to decay by half, for the activity to decrease by half, or for half of the radioactive nuclei to decay. Explain if this is likely to significantly affect the estimate of the year of birth made by the scientists. Think about the age of the people that they're using and the years that they are between, and think about this value, 5,700 years, and think if the this half-life this decaying is going to affect the estimate as much pause the video have a go well no it's not going to affect the estimate much why is it not going to affect the estimate much because no is not the entire answer we don't get a mark for just saying no because not much carbon-14 will have decayed or because the activity of the carbon-14 will not have changed much. Okay, you could put that in a different way. You could say because the half-life is much greater than the time in the study. Or indeed, 5,700. I think they started in 1940, it said, so that would be... Uh, 75 years, so 5,700 is much, much greater than 75 years. Last bit then. Forensic scientists use another method to find out approximately how old a person was when they died. They look at how worn the teeth are. So, again, this is not to do with radioactive dating in itself. So, if they find a body that is any age from before the uh, carbon-14 data was, was um, they started collecting the carbon-14 data, they can guess how old the person is by how worn the teeth are. In other words, we, we eat, we use our teeth throughout our lives, and we can just look at how worn they are to give us an estimate of how long we've been alive. Both the carbon-14 test and the teeth wear test have limitations. Put a tick or a cross in each of these boxes to show if each test works in each of these situations. 
So the situations are down here on the left, and the carbon-14 test is here, and the t 4 test is over here. Okay, pause the video, have a little go, think which one could be used when. So, which one could tell you which year the person was born? Well, the carbon-14 test can, as long as they're born after 1940. But the teeth wear test wouldn't. It will tell you how old the person was when they died, not when they were born. It could be used to find out where a person was born. Well, actually, neither of these tests could tell you anything about that. It provides useful information on a person born before 1930. Remember, they started collecting that data right at the very start. You were told they started collecting the data in 1940. So there's no information about people, no useful information about people born before 1930. The teeth wear test will provide some useful information about them. It will tell you roughly how old they were when they, were died, when they died. Okay, well, thank you very much for listening. I really hope you do very well in your exams. Um, best of luck to you.